I ain't got. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to rep a place. I go to a place. They try to associate me with the place. I just want to have this organic conversation, and mm. you know what I mean. I don't want to. I don't want to think about like oh, institution. I mean, yeah, but. Not really. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of fun, bro. Yeah, we here. Oh, we on. Oh, we ready? Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. This, that's like back, like the backstage group and stuff. Bro. Where are we at right now? Uh, we're in the backyard. We're in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. We're in the backyard. Um, now, I mean, if you if you asking like where we at in terms of what's relevant and what's on the mind, that's a different. That's a different thing. I'm, I mean, I'm either of them, but we're literally in the backyard. We're in the backyard, and we're in, we in North Carolina right now. North Carolina. Technically ground. Technically ground. The, bur- the buck right up the street. Right right up the street. Either way, it's home. Either way, <laughs> it is, it is yeah. it's basically all practically the same. Yeah. Either way it goes. Damn. So, yeah, there's no real format here we've been wanting to do this for a long time as far as just having a conversation uh and have it recorded so that's what we were doing so there's you take it take it wherever yeah guess if i had to start with anything um i know we both artists different mediums uh you got history as art going but how long has art played a factor in your life? Uh, whole life. Whole life. Whole life. Yeah. Okay. Even when I, even when I didn't know that it was. You remember your first interactions with art? Um, not like in particular, not really, but um, I do, I do remember making like a butterfly when I was in daycare. And painting a crying clown. I'm pretty sure I have my own other little sketches or scribbles or whatnot. I used to want to draw uh, different characters, different superheroes, Dragon Ball Z, stuff like that. But and I guess that was just a natural attraction. That was just natural for you. Um. Well. I think it's natural for everybody. Yeah. I think, yeah. And the reason why I say that is because I think that, I think that when we're, when we're born, we come out wanting to make marks. Like once, once we understand that we can make a mark, in my, from my perspective, that's what we do. I think everybody's scribbled. I think everybody's colored. And I think that if you found a way in your childhood to escape doing that, I think you're one of the rare few, but mm. I think that everyone in, in some way instinctively leaves their mark on something. I think that's just. You said escape. You think art was used for a way to escape when you were a child? Um, I definitely, I definitely think it was something for me to do. Something to do. Yeah, I mean, I used, man, I used to be bored a lot, Bill. Like that's. You know, same thing for me. It's like it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, just just using the art, man, as a way to, like I said, give me something to do. You know, I just enjoyed. I just enjoyed doing it. This was this was before we had cell phones that had access to the internet. This was before social media. This was back when Game Boys was still out. Uh, you you had Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Yellow. We wouldn't even own Pokemon Go. We weren't even there. You know what I mean? This, this is when I was coming up doing it. So, yeah, for me, if you didn't have one of them things, you was either watching TV or doing some art. And you still doing art today? You never stop? Uh-uh. Okay. So it's safe to say, like, art is a part of who you are. Yeah, I think it's a part of all of us. And you'll never stop doing art. In some way, shape, or form, I'm pretty sure I'm going to always be doing some kind of art or creative activity. 
because even 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 the very thought itself a creative thought is is an act of creativity in my from my perspective you know that's why i think you can get into that's why i think we can get into what your medium is which is comedy it's and definitely an art form yeah but it, it's not tangible per se you know it's not like a, a, a drawn picture it's yeah. not that but yet and still that's creative you know you aren't you creating from the mind aren't you still being creative when you do that oh yeah man sometimes you get too creative with jokes though oh yeah yeah like what like offending people yeah it's a thin line between humor and just offense yeah i see a lot of comics nowadays where uh they'll get upset with the crowd like oh they can't take a joke but at the same time, it's supposed to be funny, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fine line. I guess it's the same thing for art. Like, oh, that's a piece of shit. And then somebody else was like, no, that's on display. You're going to have to figure out some kind of way to edit that. Oh, like, excuse me. Okay. No, it's okay. Language, I, language. Okay. That, I started laughing because I wasn't sure if names were brought out. Oh, you names. You see what I'm saying? I said I ain't gonna, I ain't, I'm not going to name drop nobody. We we have the ability to edit too. Still good, okay. Um, but I'll try to watch. I watch my language. Shit. Nah, just whatever is there. I'm just gonna. Okay. I'll let it like we want it to keep being because like it's natural. It's got to be what it is. But I think the one place that I differ even in that, Bill, when it comes to the creative process, all I be hearing majority of the time is like let it flow, let it flow. You know, like let let a thing flow. I'm not against that. Like, as you know, you know, it's freestyle. You know, freestyle is like ultimate flow. Um, come up with lyrics, texting lines. That was like even then being creative. And I think that as I've kept going, it's uh, I keep hearing like, let it flow, let it flow. And I think that's good for for relief or like psychological relief or expression to express yourself. I think that's good there. But I think if you're making an art, if you're making art for a purpose or for other people to enjoy, I think that it has to start. I think that it has to start going into this territory where, yeah, it can flow, but editing is not a sin. It's not like if you if you edit what flowed out naturally that somehow that's that's not creative too or part of the creative process. It's funny you mention edit because when it comes to doing stand up, it's like three different aspects of it. There's the performer, there's the editor, and there's the writer. And the editor, all he's doing all day is he's going over the tapes, he's trimming the fat, he's looking for the gaps in between spaces. He's just like, how can we get this more concise? Sometimes that affects the creativity or the performer, if you will, because when you're performing, it's all an act. Like, it's like, you don't want to seem like you're reading from a script because then it takes away. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess it takes away. I want to say enigma of the fucking performance, because I don't know if you ever heard someone and it just sounds like they read from script. Like, what is this? A PowerPoint? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck we in class. I mean, damn, try to watch my language. <laughs> but when you but when you watch this, <laughs> when you watch a stand up, though. I, you'll you'll check out on those performers where it just sounds like they're reading from a script because it's like this doesn't feel natural. Um, I do got to edit a lot more. It's tough though. It's tough. Sometimes it can be cringeworthy going back and looking at your sets, looking at your old material. You ever feel like that? Bro, all the time. Looking back at old artworks, like uh, yeah, old art becomes new art because another part of my my take is that I either take art that hasn't sold or hasn't been seen and either give it away to someone as a gift or I remake it as mm. another, a whole different piece. Okay. I used to, I used to be more prone, honestly, in frustration to throwing it out, period, all the way together. But then I started thinking to myself, that's only there if necessary. And that lets me know that I'm creating for its own sake and not towards a purpose. Like, to just make something, it could just stay with me. True. But if I'm if I'm saying, hey, uh, I wanna I wanna make sure that this this goes out, like I'm intentionally like, no, this ain't just for me. This is 
to go out, then I I respond different. Like, and I heard what you said about the editors and stuff, and like that is that is one approach that an editor could be on is like how to how to take away or trim or whatever. But an editor could also be seen as a collaborator to get towards the intention of the product or the project. So might just take a way to say, hey, well, you're saying that you want this for this particular audience, or you're saying that you want this to appeal to these particular uh, sports enthusiasts. You're trying to appeal to Laker fans, but you're talking about the Bulls. Uh, that, yeah. that ain't going to – I got to – you need to say something about L.A., say something about the Lake. Like, an editor can also be help, helpful in doing that. Too. I know in writing a lot of times it's it's the it could be the other way of seeing that way, but let me ask you this. When I get into my creative process of joke writing, I usually start off with like reflections. I just start off with like kind of clearing the mind, seeing what's on, getting things off my chest. It helps me to get to a point to where I feel like, okay, I don't have anything stopping me from thinking or getting to my creative outlet. And then from there, I usually, I might listen to some old sets, just I have something to go off of. And then from there, I just like, I'll start on the subject, just ruminate on it and just see where I can go with the funny. Um, what's the creative process like for when you, when you're doing art? It's a great question. Because these these days it's like I said it's different from how it was. Like before, I would just do it because I was feeling something in a situation. I was trying to process something, whether it's an emotion or a thought, and it would just come out in a in a visual form. I didn't I would I didn't know or concern myself with certain elements of the craft. But now I know like certain elements of the craft, like composition, values. The relationships between light and dark form creating that and you know i think about that a, a lot more now as i'm making stuff or even things like juxtaposition of colors contrast um how colors can make you feel you know i tend to i like i like just straight up black and white and hints of gray i like it when color is not distracting from the overall picture Mm. But you can see what you can see because light is present. It is giving off the illusion of light. So that's why you can still see what's going on uh, in general, really, because of light. And as far as, you know, in art, the creation of the impression of light. And I'm, I'm really attracted to that. Uh, I like color, I like colors, too, because it comes with a with a feeling. You know what I mean? It's oh, yeah. More exciting. But Do you? So... Sometimes I suffer from writer's block where I just feel like I can't, I just keep thinking of something. And then how I get myself out of that, like I go back to my sets, old sets, listen. And I'm wondering, for an artist, do you ever suffer from artist block? Yeah. What you what do you do to get back into that creative flow? Um, I look at I look at other artists whose work mm. I appreciate. Okay, so you go yeah. outside. Sometimes, yeah, I go outside. Okay. Yeah. So, like, um, been looking at, I'll probably butcher the names, but, like, Giotto. He's an early Renaissance artist, Italian. Um, Bellini, another one, Italian Renaissance. Um, Mentega, I think is how you say his name. I think he's somehow related to Bellini, maybe, like, his brother-in-law. You just named, like, three different Italian Renaissance dudes. Yeah. Is, this, is there a connection between Italian and art? What's well, not, connection? not exclusively. My my personal interest is, in, the, is okay. in that area of art. Like, art is super expansive. It doesn't just start at the Renaissance or even just in Europe. My, my... Caveman drawings. Yeah, well, I mean, some of the first early drawings were found in France, which I know is Europe, but it's also uh, uh, traces of art in Africa as well on the walls and more functional i feel like native american type like put it on the mm. mask or the clothing it was more for like uh to me dec like decorative as opposed to just having a picture on the wall for its own sake 
even though I think some of the pictures on the walls was also probably used to tell stories. Oh to yeah, describe something like hieroglyphics. Yeah, but like from what I've seen, I'm, from what I've seen, Native American art and uh, some 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 of the African art that I've seen or art from the countries within Africa, uh, it's really decorative. It's more decorative. It's more about the clothing, uh, more about even the jewelry. Uh, when it comes to the mass, the spiritual meanings behind that, what they mean. You think there's a connection between time and place in the art? Yeah. Like geographically speaking. Yeah. What's your What's your opinion on that? Like, how does a region or a place and time affect what one creates? Well, I think just early on, I think early on it it just had a natural effect because in some places some resources were available that others weren't. So it could affect the type of paint that you use on a piece or whatever the surface was or what type of material you were even using for the art period. Like I know that in, or I've, I've seen that in China, they were more so into ink painting because they could produce ink paper. So it was just like a tradition. Just work with what you got. Right. Okay. Work with what you got. Uh, and I think these days it's like we have access to so much just at your fingertips. Who knows what you got? You can get all types of material from anywhere, really. So in this day and age, how do you decide what kind of art you're going to create? Do you have an intention when you start out? Do you just start with a blank canvas or do you have like, no, I'm going to use this tool. I'm going to create on this piece of whatever. And I have an image already. Or do you just what's it like for you when you start? I do a little bit of all of that, man. And, okay. I, and I think the reason why is because art is always this place that I, that I go to that excites me. Like with art, you can always find something new. Like it's not like. Um, and I think you can do this if you if you had the like eyes condition for it, but it's not like you go into work every day and it's the same routine or you see the same people. It's consistent. It's, we know that at this time we're going to take this break for this. We know that you only have this many sick days and like it's a it's a structure around it, you know, uh, with art that can be there or not. And so I go to art as a as a place for excitement and a place of newness. I'm always looking there for something new. Now, me in particular, um, I tend to describe how I do it is whatever is consuming me at the time. That's what I'm going to produce. Mm, so like okay. lately I've been studying Orthodox Christianity, iconography. That's one of the reasons why I was looking at some of these Renaissance artists, because I had the intention of creating art that was used more as devotional pieces, pieces that inspired contemplation, meditation, reflection, these things that are beneficial to us as humans without worrying about whether the form is nice, whether you like these colors and how to. I want you to like you. I want you, and I hope you want to like the art that you invite into your home. But the intention of the art, as I've been leaning towards it, is learning about some of these art used as a spirit, like a spiritual tool or a, a religious tool or object, and what that's supposed to inspire in the viewer. Like not just beauty and aesthetic, but like like my um. I think his name's uh, Angelico. I think his last name's Angelico. He's got like this painting on the wall of a monastery because he joined this like Dominican order of a monastery. And part of what they, part of what he did, no payment from what I know, he he created these images on the wall out of obviously like whatever his creativity was, however he saw it. Uh, these images of Christ. One of them is. Um, I think it's called like the mockery of Christ. I might have the name wrong, but you got like Mary on the side. She doing some Angelico, I think, has placed himself in the painting. But he's like in a contemplative position because they thought in that order that your actual posture, how you were sitting, how you were affected, how you were connecting with the divine, just like your posture. Prayer. Interesting. And so his his painting on his painting on that wall was supposed to remind the viewers who would have known that of that and to show what the Lord was going through or a representation of what the Lord was going through. And I 
that's interesting to me because you know I am a believer in the Lord, bro. So I I'm sitting over here trying to figure out ways and have for a long time because even before history is art dot com was dropped, um, even before the Love Challenger initiative was formed, period as a, as a thing, it was I paint for God. I've always been trying to navigate how do I create in an authentic way, but also create work that honors God. Sometimes I miss that mark. Sometimes I'm dead on. I've been all over the place. I've used all types of materials. Like I, I've explored. I've explored and I've experimented, and I'm not gonna stop doing that in a way. But that's why I keep talking about like the editor. Like I feel like I've experimented and explored so much that now I'm at a point where I'm saying, okay, well, I know I can do that because I've been doing that. How do I edit this or how do I form it in such a way that it's clearly moving towards this intention that I got for it? Like, yeah. In comedy, they say it takes seven years to find your voice. I wonder how long it takes for an artist to find theirs. You think it's seven? Um, I I think that I think that in many ways you're always figuring out your voice in a way. In many ways, because I feel like you're always adding to your voice or taking from it. Like the way your voice is now, let's say, isn't the way it would have been when you was in first or second grade. The way it is now wasn't even the same way it was, let's say, in, in 2015, 2020. Mm -hmm. Different additions and subtractions from people's voices. I think um, I think when I hear stuff like that, it's more like, have you found what you feel comfortable doing yet? Have you mm -hmm. found where you feel that you that you feel you fit or you feel that you're creating the work that you actually want to create and the work that that is intending to do what you wanted to so like bro for me man i'm i don't i'm tired of viewing art as this isolated thing this thing that i just have to do in private and then i put it out and some people like it or they don't i intentionally want to create pockets or communities of people that are not just united around the art but in some kind of shared values and the art is just a link in that i'm trying to recreate if you will and maybe many people are post post COVID times but create these intentional communities where like i'm not i'm not throwing things out to the wind and hoping to to, to get something off of it i want to know what people are after i want to know what people need and i want to be able to produce something creatively that speaks to that if not then i i feel like i'm just doing it for myself and there's nothing wrong with that like i said like as a psychological release or an emotional expression of a thing i don't got no it ain't never gonna be no qualms with me on that front but i i i want or if it's going to be spiritual too in nature to be about people because anytime you think spiritual in some form or fashion it's more than just you involved like oh, yeah. you there but like fellowshipping other people like the spirit involves more than just the individual i want my art to to follow suit i don't want it to just be for myself all the time i think we both as artists in different realms are trying to always i think any artist is trying to make a connection i don't know necessarily if that's the intention but i think that plays such a big point into why they not even why but just on who they are being um it sounds where my jokes don't make a connection like it's just funny to me uh or uh or i'm looking for the connection and it's not landing and so you're just doing more work and then there's times where you just find out like, oh, that joke just isn't for you or that isn't for certain people. I'm trying to trying to just. I hate when I don't make the connection, though, you know, I hate when in my mind it goes over and I'm like, damn, that's not how it was supposed to be. But can I ask you a question? Yeah. Like when that happens, though, and you see that. 
do you ever have the thought of like instead of it being like oh that just wasn't for you it's like i'm gonna go find who this is for like i'm gonna quit that's what i mean i'm like casting out into the wind and see who like it and see who don't i if i've done my homework i know based on a region or a place what some people might be into mm. like just uh like maybe the rodeo might be big uh, you know, the further south you go or towards Texas, or maybe the Texas area, but it might not be as big and let's say like Maine or, you know, a, a more northern eastern part of the country. I, I, I think that I, I think that the people that want what we got are somewhere, even if it's in like a little small niche cate- uh, niche category where it's like. But are we going to be OK with that? Like, I think that's another question. It's like. Do you interpret, when do you interpret that you're successful? Because I think I've, I've told mm. you, I think you're successful already because you are doing what you set out to do, even from the time in which you said you was going to, which was to be a comedian. Like, okay, so that, we got that. And so, like, if there was, if there's another element or definition to that that's also now at play or that you add to that, well, I think that, okay, well, once you get that, then what? Is it just always... More, more. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So when is the satisfaction? When are we? When are we gonna say, you know, more is not enough, but like, enough is enough. <laughs> like, instead of like more, 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 more. It's just. I don't know if that's possible as an artist, because. Your whole being is creating. I feel like once you can't create no more, that's like, that's the end of the book. That's the end of your life, you know? Well, and I like that. Then let's grow out that. I think that when you say that, regardless, I'm going to be creating. I'll give you an example right now. Right now, you and I are creating. True. We, we, we're forming sentences and in the location that we have not been in before to do what we're doing. That's a form of so I think that when I, if I open my mind up to what is actually an expression of my creativity or creativity as a whole, let's say, universal for everybody, everybody's doing it, then I then it's me reinterpreting what I find it to be. Like, I just choose to draw or might choose to paint or do assemblage. You might choose to tell jokes and do comedy and really bring out the best medicine for people, which is laughter. But there are other there are other forms there are other forms of it that might not be considered like the school teacher who has to be creative around how they deal and interact with a child. Like we might not might not see it that way because like oh you didn't draw nothing, you didn't put a put a set together. But you're coming up with plans on how to best engage with this child that's not yours. <laughs> like to me, that's creative too. Uh, sanitation workers, I believe they they even have their own level of creativity. Uh, any mark made, so like writing on bottles. People don't see it this way; they just see it as being mon- like mundane things. Right. But there's there is creativity in the mundane, and you can like dial into that. And then if that's the case, you're always in some form being creative. So now you get to say, well, if I'm always being creative, what do I intentionally want to be creative around and about? And now that that's like my direction and focus because I'm always being creative anyway. I sometimes have a direction of focus when I'm when I'm joke writing. Uh but those times are usually when it involves personal experiences that I'm trying to connect with people on. Uh big one for me is like racism. I'm in Austin, Texas so I'm around a lot of conservatives, a lot of right, a lot of white people, and sometimes it's just it's difficult to make those connections. And then sometimes I do, and I'm like, damn, how I do that, you know? Because I know I'm not like, I guess necessarily who they would be coming to see, or would be on their radar for comedy. Um, I find myself trying to do that even. I guess I find myself trying to do comedy even when I'm not on stage. When I've got like a table and say it's a 
a full table full of like senior citizen conservative white folks. Basically, the opposite spectrum of who I am. Uh, I'll do little stuff like that you can take on stage, like maintain an eye contact, approaching with a smile. Those are just cues that already make people feel safe or warm, kind of like a welcome greeting. But then there's times where as if I'm in a room and I'm not making connections and the jokes ain't landing and it's just stale faces looking back at you. Um, oh man. But yeah, those things just lead me to usually, I don't know why it's racism. I, I think it's because I live it. Like I go through it on a daily basis. So like I try to point out the bullshit in it and make jokes of it. And some I've made a few jokes that go over well. And that's made like the conservatives laugh like, oh, OK, damn, I am on some bullshit without me even knowing. Uh, I don't know why that's I, I think racism plays such a big factor because of where I'm at. I think that's why I think I get back to that topic so much. Being one of the only few black voices in rooms full of white people it just I encountered the bullshit, you know, Uh I'm trying to I'm trying to think back to what you said at one point about before the direction. Well, well, yeah. But we've been talking like a uh, we've been talking, so yeah. Yeah, and I just well, I want to keep I want to build with you off what you said right there because I I I think that I'm more of like a divergent thinker, so I'm gonna try to piece things together as opposed to like yo. Know, I could do that too, but I think there was so it was so many things that came to mind as you said that number one, I'm there's no there's no denial that that race may be there or there, you know what I mean? Like, uh, okay, but we know that, and I know we gotta live that, but you know, uh, so in those states though, and when, by states I mean states of mind, states of being, not like states like texas but i think that one thing that can happen is okay if i know i've got a conservative crowd i'm going to appeal to them like i'm going to find out what you like and what you don't like and i'm going to use my creativity to keep you laughing because the name of my game as a comedian is for you to laugh that's why you're going to follow me that's why you're going to keep going and i think if we look at and and i know Race is a factor in any in any industry you go into, but I think about like, and it's this might this could be a jump, but it's the first thing that came to mind. I think about like how The Rock recently came back to WWE, right? When The Rock was first coming out, he was with the Nation of Domination, he, you know, Veruca and him. We are the Nation. You know what I'm saying? He was doing that on WWE now, uh, so. You know, started by a guy who shall remain nameless just for the sake of the of the company. Uh, but they they was on that when The Rock was first coming out and even had to deal with the like die, Rocky die and like all of that. Right. Like hated them, hated them, you know, used that to his advantage, ended up being hated more as a heel. Like when he joined the corporation and all that on the show, like they they took that. And said, okay, they don't like him. We're going to really make sure they don't like him. He's going to be one of the best heels. And then he had like this baby face turn. Mm. Even till now, Bill, if you see it now, and, and I think they're working on making him go over more as a heel now because he returned, uh, and you know, try to keep this from it. Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble. You know, the tradition of the Royal Rumble is win or fight for the championship wrestling. Right? Rock come out, boom. He like, hey, I'm gonna challenge Roman for the title. Crowd was like, no, we want Cody. Like, that's they let him know, like, yeah, you the rock and you on the TKO board, but we want Cody. Cody won Royal Rumble. We want Cody to face Roman and do it. Direction WWE been going in since he who shall remain nameless has left the company is that uh, they're starting to listen to the crowd more. They're starting to listen to uh, at least Triple H has been said as a former wrestler and now an executive listening to the crowd more. So they switched it up. They did a whole storyline change where it went from rock versus Roman, potentially to Cody back facing Roman now rock with Roman. And now he's just more of a heel again, 
But what I'm trying to get at is the crowd love them and hate them. Like, they be chanting, Rocky, Rocky. But then sometimes like, Rocky sucks. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, give the people what they want. You you wanted Cody, gave you Cody. But now you're getting Bad Guy Rock. And you love Bad Guy Rock. You don't even, you ain't even supposed to love Bad Guy Rock. You love Bad Guy Rock because of what Rock then put in before. And you ain't even supposed to like The Rock, but you love The Rock. That's how I feel about, like, appeal to him. What is it, like, you know? How do we, my question here, though, is when you're appealing to the audience and you're trying to connect with them, at what point do you stop so that you maintain some sort of, I guess, integrity to their original intention? You know, I feel like if you appease to every crowd, every audience, don't you lose some of that authenticity? Don't you lose some of that integrity as an artist? Well, I'm so glad we're doing this because this brings up another artist that I really like. And I used to question this about him as well. But the more I the more I see it, the more I, I'm starting to pick it up. Somebody like Andy Warhol, like okay. Andy Warhol saw art itself as business and saw business as art. So Andy... Okay. If you know that he did the reproduction of the Campbell soup cans, there was nothing inherently crazy about that. Campbell's already dropped that. You just putting multiple times on a on a print don't mean nothing. And he had like the factory, so he had actual people working to produce his art. They would call him and see if he liked the color, and then he'd be like, "No, I don't like that kind of green. Go get you know Miranda green or whatever." He ain't even in the studio. Somebody's in there getting it, putting it together. Go to Andy for a proof, like. Yeah, we can drop that. That was art to him. It wasn't interesting. But, but then you start asking. You talk about integrity. Was, was that not who he was? Is that not what he wanted to do? So when you start talking about going to appeal, it just depends on to me how you approach your art form. Like, is it a business or is it this thing where it needs to to hold to this integrity or this intent? I think that has to be discerned. Because like I said, Andy Warhol is just he what the. Uh, he didn't make he it wasn't it wasn't like no Mona Lisa, like you painting it, you studying, you know. It wasn't even like do the right thing. Let's say, like the production, the actual the meaning of the characters involved in the film. Like it wasn't get out, you know. It it wasn't that to a degree. It was him taking what was already out there and reproducing it in another way and selling it for money. That was his art form. Ain't not the hustle. I mean. So it really just depends. Like if it's gonna take away, I feel like if it's gonna, if you think it's, if if you think that it's doing something to your integrity as a creator, as an artist, then don't do it. If that's one of your values, it means something. You know, I'm I ask the same questions, um, but then it, to me it goes back to, well, why am I why am I doing it anyway? Am I doing it for me? Mm. If I'm doing it for me, then. I can just do it however, whenever, however I need to do it in a safe space. Don't get me wrong. Like, and that's okay. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's like what, what something I heard from Steve Houston when he was talking about building an artist portfolio. He was like, yeah, you can, in a nutshell, he said, yeah, you can put all your own original stuff in there and don't be surprised if you stand out too much and you don't get accepted. It's like because mm. galleries and people that you're asking to be accepted by they already have a criteria that they're judging by. So it's not like your work isn't good work. It's just at this particular gallery, we're more into uh, paintings of boats and flowers. And while you're doing paintings of boats and flowers, you're just doing it in an abstract way that doesn't really match what we're about over here. You know? And it's like, don't think your work's not good. It, it, it is, but the people that you're trying to be accepted by, they're looking for a certain product or a certain field because that's what they are known for. I feel like I experienced that at Austin with my stand-up sometimes where I've been told by other comics like, oh man, if you were in a black room, those jokes would have went over differently. They'd have been more accepted or more appreciated. But it's like, damn, I just want to be funny wherever I'm at. You know? And I get that. Like, some materials just how does someone relate to that if they haven't lived that or experienced that? And I think that's part of the performer or artist's job to draw and make those connections. 
And I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm just not uh, deep along enough in the experience to figure out those connections right now. I've made a few, but not to the point to where I'd like to be, where I can just go in any room, be myself, and be funny, you know? Hmm. I think in, to some degree, though, Bill, there is no there is no comedian who just walks into a place and is funny without appealing somehow to the people that he's funny to. Like, I think about somebody like Kevin Hart, like how he really get his start. What are his usual roles in certain films? What comedy is he really known for? You know, like. When he was coming out, and I and this isn't all conclusive, I didn't keep up with Kevin Hart, but I know it was a lot of imitation and making funny voices, you know, and doing a lot of like, like a lot of animated things. And you tend to find him in roles like that in movies because that's, okay, that's hitting with that audience. Come up, we need to put your audience with ours for this exposure. Kind of like, did you know Lil Wayne had performed at WrestleMania? I did. Right. Well, Maybe a lot of people didn't, but I think the idea was, hey, Weezy going to be at WrestleMania, so Weezy, bring oh, Weezy your gonna, crowd. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah, but it's it's bring your crowd to our crowd. Let's combine crowds. You get exposure over here. We get exposure with your with your audience. Kind of like of a swap. Uh, and I think, this stim- I think some of the things happen with comedians. Like uh, Kevin Hart come play this role in this movie. Because you was real funny over here. We see you funny over here. We think that we got the perfect role over here in our creation for you to use your funniness. And you get to be funny. And we get to make a movie with your image and likeness in it. And we get to just keep selling that. And we're going to give you some of it too. But why don't you come over here and, and play this role? And I think as much as I hate to say this, man, and people might disagree but uh, life is all about roles, man. It ain't all about it, but it is It is a lot about roles because I think that in order for us to be social and civil, at some point we all do things that we might, that might betray our feelings or might betray our thoughts, but for the sake of civility, we don't do it. Like, you know, you might... And these days, that's hard to really say because some people actually now it, it ain't even they're just gonna do whatever they feel like. If they want to, if they want to smack an elder, I know that's an extreme example for me, but it ain't for a lot of people today. Like they'll just they'll just go do it, record it, and 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 then go live with it. I mean, and I guess that I guess that too is for our audience. You know, shock shock value audience. You want to see something outlandish. You want to see something like. Me, I was on that. I want to get away from it. It might be boring. It might be classic, and it might be like oh, blase. Um, but I want to. I want to be able to be a part of things and create things that like you can always return back to. Like any given time, it ain't gonna startle you. It ain't gonna have you like oh my god. It ain't. It ain't gonna be like. A, it's not. It's not necessarily gonna be an emotional experience for the sake of it. I want it to be more like what something I believe is just beneficial to, to all of us humans at some point, which is just reflection, contemplation, devotion. I think we all are looking to be devoted to something. People are like, no, we're not. I'm not trying to devote to anything. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Because how do you define yourself? Are you just your job? Are you just your position? Are you just the school you go to? Are you just an athlete? And when I say just, not to belittle these things, but I'm saying, you talking about you ain't devoted. Yeah, you are. It's just, what are you devoted to? You know, um, probably went off on a, a little side track there, Bill, but as far as being funny in any room you walk into, bro, I feel like, Again, same thing I, like I was trying to say with the editor. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the one who appeals for his for his or her calls. Like if if all if all you really value at the end of the day is the last of the people, let's say, what's the big deal about 
me figuring out what's funny to y'all and then crafting it towards that. Because you get what you're looking for. Jeez. You get what you're looking for. And I also get what I'm looking for. What's the crime in that? Oh, I want you to I want you to like what I like. I want you to laugh at what I think is funny. And when you don't do that, now I feel unsuccessful. Hmm. When when I can just find out what you already think is funny, do my spin or my style on it and see it, give myself a chance for you to like that. Like it's about it's about appeal. And I think being such a super individual is cool. And I think that. But I, I also think that there are certain individuals with certain media exposures and followings that are individuals for the community that they've already built up over time. You know, like, like Logan, like Logan Paul, for example. Like when he was first getting started, he, they weren't on nothing. They went, they was trying to just make these like little shocking YouTube videos. They started getting some views, getting some money up off of it. Now it's like everybody trying to jump on it. Well, they was what the stock market would call like first movers. Like they was mm. some of the first movers in on an industry or in on a, a product. Okay, now everybody trying to catch up, so to speak. So what I'm what I'm suggesting is the people who are like that, whatever celebrity level or big time influencer, they're they're appealing through their individuality, through a community they've all, already built. I think for some artists that are starting off and by starting off, I just mean yet to build their community. It's just that you've yet to, to build. it. Now, what am I going to build it based on? Well, what do I want? You know, if I'm not willing to do what I need to do to get what I want, my belief is that I don't really want it. So if I if I want you to, let's say, appreciate my art, let's say, but I'm over here drawing five eyes and some abstract shapes and you looking at it like, oh, wow, that's OK. I, I see what's going on there. Wow, that's really, you know what you're not saying? I like that. Yeah. It's as simple as that. But if I came back, let's say with that same style, let's say the, the abstract style, but I did something that's a little more recognizable. So I'm still doing me, but also giving you what you're looking for. And now it's a more recognizable picture of a boat, let's say. And I'm like, oh, I really like that boat. I like what you, are you selling this? You're more receptive to it. It's something that, that you, it's something that you know and that you like. And that, that to me is just what we, that, that's, that's hard to, to go against as far as like that not being like what people are really connected to. They just connected to what they like. And if, yeah, I just, my only concern is like an artist trying to appease the crowd so much that they just lose themselves in the process, you know, where it's just like, but who are you? I mean, now, yeah, now, that's yeah. Now we're getting into that. Like, whoever you are that you're trying to hold on to, feel free to hold on to them. If who I am supposedly isn't working for my business or my craft, if it's even a business. Now, if you if you're doing it for the sake of, to me, do you? It don't matter if they like it or not, because you ain't trying to you you ain't asking for nothing in return. Y'all mm. ain't doing no no exchange. You, but if but if I want something from you. I got to give you something that you like. I can't just think that, I mean, you can, and there's some people that I guess has, has, has gotten off on that, but me just producing something that's just of me, something you've never seen before, just totally different. That don't always hit right away. The people aren't used to it. They're not right. familiar with it. I don't know what I'm looking at. I, I don't have a reference for this. That's why I feel like a lot of people tie newer work in with older work. Like when I used to look, listen to Jordan Peele interviews, he used to always reference these older horror movies that he got his current ideas from as a as a way to say, well, no, this isn't totally new. I picked this up from over here. It resonates because I saw it first resonate over here. I saw that people I liked it and I think other people like this. So I kind of put it over here. And I think when you talk about, you know, being true to yourself. You know, who are you? You know, for me, bro, I answer that as <laughs> child of God, you know what I'm saying? A mini creator of a larger creator, uh, someone who seeks after righteousness, uh, you know, 
and I and that shapes the way I approach what I do. So in that sense, I never want to create something that has me saying, "No, nah, you ain't you ain't really what you think you are." But if I don't think I'm anything, or I don't know who I am, or it's it's up for grabs, whoever I am, then it, what are you losing? What are you giving away? Like I'm coming over here. I know you like tractor jokes, so but I don't want to tell tractor jokes because I don't tell tractor jokes. But you could. Are you losing yourself by using your creativity to craft tractor jokes to get the laughs that you want? Uh, I think in that sense you're kind of expanding yourself. You're right. Kind of growing. Yeah, to me, that's different. But see, it's all about the, the look of it. Because before it was like, not necessarily saying from you, but before it was like, I'm losing myself. Now you're not losing yourself. You're expanding. <laughs> you're expanding into new territory, if you will. Okay. I mean, you know. Because I can't, I won't say I can't because that's too much in the negative. I need a mentality. I have a mentality that if I can continue to produce positive from situations in life that feel negative or that look negative, I'm always on a momentum to continue and to create and give what I have to share with people. Like as soon as I start getting, and I'm using this word descriptively, but as soon as I start getting depressed on something or something is suppressing or, or pushing or stopping me from positively producing, I don't think that I have the momentum to continue to go on because I'm, I'm allowing myself to be stuck or slowed up by a concept or a thought or whatever it might be. I don't think that's good to, for, to sustain a business or a creative legacy, let's say. I think you need some, some kind of momentum, some kind of like trajectory. Somebody check my trajectory. And that wasn't a, 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 a Jay-Z line either. Bill, yeah, if you know, you know, but you can just check the trajectory. And um, that's that to me is what you need to sustain something, you know? And I think it just also depends on what you're trying to build. Like, it's going to get to a point to me, bro, where if you want to continue on what you're creating right now, you're going to have to teach other people how to handle the thing that you've made whether that's your tapings, your audios, whatever it is, because if you're trying to produce something that continues after you're here, people have to know how to manage it while they're here. Mm. If you're gone and you didn't teach anybody what to do, they're in trouble. Because now anything that could happen to your stuff can just happen. You did all this work to try to keep it going. Your time is up. Now they see your stuff and it's like, oh, well, I don't know what to do with that. Are you thinking about legacy at all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just trying to learn, or not really trying, doing my best to learn, like cover my, open up my blind spots, really. Because that what I just shared with you was a blind spot I had that I wouldn't have seen had I not have I not, if I hadn't been experiencing it as closely as I've been experiencing it. The reality of what I'm telling you about being able to pass something on to people that are ready to manage, then I wouldn't be able to, to say nothing about it. So that was like a lesson for me that's now new in my journey of making sure that things continue to, to stay even after you're gone. What does your legacy look like? I, I've i revamped it so many times. I'll just say that as of late, one vision that I see, honestly, is just having a, a, a house that's preserved, like literally preserved by either the city or like I petition for it to be a preservation or something or some kind of protected property, whatever that process is. Uh, but in that house... Uh, it's just like any other museum or thing you would go to, but it would be like a museum for not only, and this, this thought came while sitting here with you, honestly, a museum that preserves my work, but also other artists work, like mm. preserves it. Like you can't, you see 
to me, bro, when I walk into a museum, not so much a gallery because the gallery rotates the work that's there in and out. A museum holds some stuff. So that way it's always there if you want to see it. And I think that that to me is what needs to be done because I think if we're going to wait for somebody to say, hey, your work's worthy of preservation, why not never get there? But if we ourselves are like, hey, this work needs to be preserved, that's what it's going to be. So imagine, and I, and I love old things and I love seeing old things or history as art. That's why I have historyisart.com. That's why that's one of our initial projects because I, I love history and I love ancient things and I love the things of now, but imagining what they would be like in the future as ancient things. So like shows or songs or whatever that's hot right now, but like 40 years later, where is it at? Hmm. I love imagining that because there are things that's been like that in my life, like uh, uh, like that, like the song "Beautiful" with Pharrell and Snoop. Let's say that was out a few years ago. It was a, it was pretty nice then. Or like, um, this is why I'm high when Mims would drop that. You know, this. Where, where is it now? Now, now, you, now you're old head of your man. Now, we don't know about that. We own whatever they own. I ain't even keeping up with what, with what folks is on. That's part of my, another thing that, that's been developing lately, why I find it hard to connect because I'm not, whatever it is that's hot right now, I'm, I don't, I'm not doing as good of a job keeping up with it as I was when I was younger. Yeah. Or when I wanted to be young, let's say, you know. But anyway, I just say all that to say, bro, that right now the vision is to get some kind of property or house and have it as a as a space of preservation for art that I've done and other artists. Like, bro, come on in there. You know, like we got tape of you early on, and let's just say it's like, you know, like the scratching video. It's like interference. Like, you know, it's just, <laughs> but it, but it, but it was it was filmed in in twenty twenty four. Okay. You know, it just it's got that um, historic feel to it it looks really old even though it's really new and um that's that's like the main thing bro for me right now off the top like i don't want to wait for somebody to say this needs to be preserved like i'll just preserve it and then you know at least the idea is i'm gonna preserve it and then people should come and see it for themselves but also maybe ask some stuff but maybe you get some breakfast when you come in there maybe it's also an event space for current artists at the mm. same time, like, you know, uh, but that's, that's kind of, that's, that's pretty much what I'm thinking about going towards. I mean, yeah. And we'll see what form that takes. I mean, the way, the way that LTI is set up right now is the projects can be physical or digital. And so like history is art is arguably the first digital test run of this thing that I'm telling you about. And, you know, I've been in conversations about making a digital version of what I'm talking about. So we'll see. But I know that that's that's the only like the main thing that I see. And maybe it's a house of prayer too. like. There's just so many. Yeah. But the preservation aspect of it. That's that's what I'm on. I want to help preserve things so that they don't just get lost. That's a nice vision. Cool. What about you? I mean, yeah, what are you, like? Uh, my legacy to me looks like um, being a, a reference point, if you will. Uh, you know, not necessarily Someone, I mean, I guess we all compare, but more so, um, just, damn, you know, the more I think about it, I keep thinking about a reference point and just what it is, and almost, when it comes to comedy, just, I, don't, I hate to say like Hall of Fame type shit, but that's what coming to my mind. Like someone who is outstanding in their field, which is also a farmer. But you said a farmer? Yeah. 
What a Hall of Famer? Nah, this is what I was saying. The bar is like, who's someone out standing in their field? A farmer. You know what I mean? Okay. It's just a little stupid joke, you know. No, no, it wasn't a stupid <laughs> joke. It's just it took me it took me some time to get there. But once I got there, it was good. But uh yeah, my legacy just looks like someone who I know the work I put in and I know the work I'm gonna continue to put in and I don't have to be recognized for it. But it's kinda like you reap what you sow. If you put in the work is it's going to, if you put in the input, it's going to be output, you know, like that's just the nature of life. And I would just, uh, I don't have to be recognized, but like, I ain't asking for no statue or nothing like that. It's hard trying to talk about this without like bigging myself up, but I just know my legacy looks like, oh yeah, like this guy, he was a great comedian. He was funny. You should watch some of his tapes. He did this, that, and the third. Like, you know, to somebody who you look back on and be like, yeah, if you want to get some game, you should watch this guy's tapes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that sounds like the first person I thought about when you said that was like Richard Pryor. Mm. And then the next question that came to me from that was, well, who's preserving his stuff for you to be able to go back and look at? And that's me reaching a point to where, like, I got to put out some stuff, like, I mean, one of my goals is to definitely have a one hour special before I go. You know, I definitely want to be in the movie. I done did, I did, I, shit, you interviewed me, you know, a couple of things I done did, but if I could do a film and do a series, like, shit, and do a special, I, I could leave Earth for real, be happy. Said I did it all. Like, that's my biggest thing. However, you slice jokes, like sitcom, film, improv, stand up voice animation puppetry put me in there i got you coach you know well we might need you for some commercials oh yeah i was just in one of my first commercials i'm thin i've been thinking about making my own just like little stupid commercials about whatever and just put myself on there as that and just see where that goes yeah or see if you can get you a little sponsorship not little sponsorship but see if you can get sponsored that little word you and your little career. Yeah, your little, you're doing that little. In your little legacy. Little thing that you was over there doing. <laughs> it's just so important, ain't it? Yes. Because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? Of course. Maybe not to you. But you ain't doing it. Like, would you Would you still be interested in doing art if you didn't have hands? Yeah. You start learning to paint with your toes? Nah, it goes that, to me. It goes back to to what we were saying earlier, all about how I interpret it. So, like, I'm also good with poetry. So, if I didn't have my hands, I still have my voice, and I can string together a poem for you or some lyrics. And that would just be how I choose to paint if I couldn't do it that way, you know. Or I would, like you say, I would figure out another way of holding the brush and using it. But you're gonna create. You're gonna make. Like one of the biggest things, bro, for me is is whatever the concept is that you're allowing to stop you from doing whatever. And if you know what that concept is and you're okay with allowing it to stop you, then let it be that. If you don't, then I think the biggest thing that stops me is either when I'm I'm down, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Either when I'm down No COVID, but just <laughs> uh when I get down on myself, the blues, everybody gets them. Or uh, when I'm just bu bullshitting or procrastinating, just not getting to it, just finding myself. You ever find yourself doing other things and you know you should be doing something else? Yeah. Is that procrastination or is that yeah. just, okay. Yeah, that's probably the best straightforward way to get there. Okay. You, you just, I think about it all the time, man. Like if it's your, if it's your business, whether it's sole proprietorship or LLC or nonprofit, whatever it is, if it's your business and it's just you, if you're not working on it, it's not getting worked on. It's just, I mean, it's just that simple. Now, of course, you need some balance, but sometimes I think balance is just a word to use to say, I don't want to do this right now, so I'm not. Mm. Like words can be covers for certain realities of action. It's like, you need some balance. You saying that, but really it's just, Y'all don't want to do or talk about 
whatever it is at the given time. And so the balance of that is, let's not do it right now. Okay. Well, when are, when are we going to balance it back out with what we need to be doing? Like, yeah, no. If you can, if you can, in some kind of way, I would just add on every day to whatever you're working on. Whatever you want to see completed. Because I, I don't know about you and others, I'm sure that it's the case, but I have many ideas and projects that never saw the light of day because I would always jump from project to thing to thing, but no completion. Like very few projects have been completed. Those that are completed, they were completed and you, they were out. And, you know. How'd you complete those projects? I mean, on a on a base level, I gave them a deadline, uh, and some of them had a deadline. Okay. Like if I was putting together an exhibition and work needed to be turned in by a certain date, hey, when it's when it's showtime and do you got the work you need? Okay, because it's only you that's gonna be coming up short. Nobody else. We telling you the date that you need it by. You ain't got it. Okay, friend. You know, but if I'm left to my own devices, like I say, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier too. If I'm left to my own devices, I just do whatever, whenever, might get done, it might not get done. Just, you ain't doing it for nobody, you're doing it for yourself. And then if you want to take that and look at it, I mean, if that's how you would do yourself, might you get a different relationship even with yourself. Because if you like this with yourself, like, no, I might, might not. <laughs> no. Nah. I want to do good for myself. Like, what, what do you want? Why really you know, want whatever this vision or this thing is that you're talking about. Well, by the grace of God, and if it be the Lord's will, you put your right foot in front of your left one, and you go ahead and you go get that thing to the most clearest vision that you have. Just go get it. Just go get it. Whatever whatever form it's going to come in. But just make sure that you know you know how you want it to look. So that way, if you get it in another form, you could be like, this isn't how I thought it would look, but it's still what I asked for. So now I could get more specific about what I'm looking for next time so I can get closer to what it is I'm after. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you ain't doing that. I mean, because like I say, Bill, I think you're already a comedian. You know, like, those are just for facts. Like, I, I'm not. I don't get paid to do this. I mean, I get paid for a couple of shows here and there, but I'm still a novice or an amateur. Money rookie. money to the side, though. If you're not treating comedy as a business, don't worry about money. Okay. If you're talking about just the art of comedy and doing it, you're doing that. Right now, my focus is just working on my craft, just progress. Yeah, that's my focus, progress. Okay. Um, I can respect that. I'm just I'm 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 a big I'm a big fan of yours and I just I wanted I'm a big to get fan to of yours too, bro. I just wanted to get to a point where you are doing the progress, but you're also earning money for the work that you put into something. Right, right. Because like we can right. always keep going and giving, but then like what? I think I think with enough progress the money will come just because if you keep consistently delving in diving in, building, building that's that work, that's that input at some point whether it's on the back end or how far it comes you know, the royalties will come I also want to build that and say but it would help to be intentional about that. So like, okay, if you let's you make you design contracts that have royalties in it, that you enter into an agreement with somebody else and you really get royalties back on the back end or you you run into somebody who uh, who has a connection at a, at a big time comedy club or theater and they say, hey, we, we want brother. We want him to be there and and do his thing and we want to pay him. 50,000 to do this for the next year or so, let's say. 
you know uh yeah, because we can, we can, we're going to be forever working in a sense. You're going to always be doing that. But I think when we start talking more about these business related things, there are practical steps that could be done that aren't that on surface don't seem glamorous, are not really interesting, but get people to where they may want to go. And it involves how you engage with other people. That's why I think sometimes this movement about always being on yourself is dangerous because you know yourself great but you don't know anybody else you don't have the skills it seems to get to know somebody else and to to have a relationship with somebody else to the point where y'all can mutually benefit each other now it's not just you trying to do it all by yourself but you've established a relationship with somebody else that y'all mutually benefit each other and there's to me there's like humans should be on that I say should, and I say to me because some people disagree with that. Yeah. But I think as a species, as a be as beings, what else? What else can we do? I'm just gonna be selfish from you all the time. If I know where some water is, you ain't been out to this land before, and it ain't gonna hurt me to show you where the water is or to direct you towards the water. Why am I not doing it? Like, because I want to be selfish and just like. Well, this is for me and my family. It's enough water for you and yours, too. Mm. Of course, you could talk about it getting bigger, and globalization, all that. But I'm just saying on a base level, I really do think we should support and help each other. As long as it's not hurting you and you're mutually benefiting, why not? It doesn't always have to just be to my best interest or just in yours. How can we both benefit? And if we both can't benefit, I might not get into it. You know, we've already done and might have to continue. But I'm just saying, haven't you done your fair share of sacrificing? Haven't you done your fair share of, well, I'm just going to let this party benefit, but I'm not really. My benefit is exposure. My benefit is, you know, getting to do what I love. OK. And and and. Is, has that been benefiting your stomach? Has that been benefiting your ability to get around to other places to continue to do what you love? Has it benefited you to 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 help grow this thing nah, that you say you love? Not to that degree, because I'm I'm still working as a server. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying, man. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having a part-time job or having a job while you're doing your creative thing. But I do think that on practical levels, uh, there are certain steps that are that can be taken in real time to develop your network of people that you're around, to get around other people who are in the areas that you want to be in. Like, I'm not going to try to learn how to swim from people who who run cross country because I'm over here talking about things that deal with swimming. And they're like, hey, but we we do cross country. Why don't you go over here with the people who swim Then you'll get better information? Now. So it's like, for us, like, why would I gauge what I want to do in my comedy career around people who don't have anything to do with comedy? Why am I, I, I've obviously made some friends and have some networks that's been able to get me on stage in front of people. So if I want to continue to expand, why don't I meet more people like that? Why don't I meet more comedians that we can practice uh, sharing our jokes with each other or sharing our writing tips with each other? Why don't I go towards that more than I go towards, let me see if the people like it. Because obviously I didn't get myself on the stage alone. Whoever my network was, whoever it was that said, hey, we like that you can do this and we think that you would be successful on our stage. There's a spot for you here. People are already here. We just going to put you in front of people. Whoever that was that pulled that trigger, so to speak, them, them the ones that I need more of because they're going to keep me doing what I'm doing until I can build it to a point that now I have a, a following from people who believed in me before to put me on stage. And now, now I'm, I've got a little bit more momentum, like I was saying, you know, and it's so easy these days to lose the momentum. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's all about motion for real. Body in motion stays in motion. Yeah. yeah. And like this thread I saw earlier, just how about for those that, that, that are interested, for those that are going to look regardless, for those that are just following you because they they genuinely like what you do, I do it for y'all. Yeah. You know, I ain't just doing it for... You might as well talk your shit yeah. because people going to talk shit regardless. You might as well talk yours. Uh, do you ever do like interview part twos or yeah another interview? Yeah, because I want to see where we at so far. Not just that, but I want to revisit or do another interview just later on. Okay. Like to see this, this, I don't know if you call it a part two or I guess it's like when the talk show has another, they have a returning guest, you know, yeah. like it's been some time since the last one, what things have changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know what I also, since we here now, we manifested this, what I'm trying to manifest is us being in the space together. Where you're you're creating, I'm creating, but we're doing it live in front of an audience. So we're gonna manifest that now at some point where I don't know if you're gonna be painting, sculpting, but I'ma definitely be talking shit. I mean telling jokes. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And I what I would love at the end of that is like to auction off the piece. Yeah. Yeah, or I'm open to doing that and I can also uh have a word in designing more so like the fl the flyers and stuff that are used. Mm, okay. And then it just, you be there doing your thing, you know, and I can be out there. Cause again, it's all about how you want to view the art. Like I could be helping to promote you and that be the art, but like I help design the flyers and help maybe design the backdrop or like, you know, and it still be like a collab. I don't, I want to open up art from, I personally enjoy drawing. You know what I mean? I personally enjoy that, but I the medium needs to remain open to interpretation. That's the one thing about art that everybody loves is that it's open to interpretation. So whatever, which is what I love and, and at the same time don't, but like that's also a way to, that we could do it. I wanna just, when people see me, it don't just need to be that, right? Cause what's an artist? Like if you thinking, that's, right. a, that's another conversation. I'm right, because now you got me thinking, like, what if you had an art piece and that art piece told a joke? Right. That's crazy. Like, that's unheard of. Like, huh? Yeah. So. Or what if what if I help design it to where there's a screen that has you on there as you're dressed for that night, but it's live you there and you're having a conversation with pre-recorded you and it's full of jokes. Like, things like that. It's like. You know, you could just, you could start, you could start playing around more if you just, you just kind of leave it up to interpretation. You just, I think, but you still got to be careful there. I mean, I've had those conversations too, because whatever, you know, people are accused of doing and then calling it being creative. Yeah, it's a thin line. Oh, well, it's a, it's a pretty thin line, so, uh. And it's not it's not just it's not to put brown blast, but like I heard that Marilyn Manson has the bad girls room. Like if he if he thinks that that's a creative expression, it's all respect. And sure, maybe for you, but it wouldn't be the way that that I would want to express or go. And the bad girls room supposedly is where send the the women that he's dated or whatnot into this soundproof room, and they just stay in there. Like to me, that's where like it never come out. It's like time out. It's almost like a form oh, of timeout, oh, but it's okay. soundproof, so you can't hear anything. It's just you in there. It's almost like a form of, I won't, I won't say a form of torture, but kind of because it's like you can't even get out on your own will. He's put you in the sound. You don't hear nothing. It's just blank. You just, uh, it's just you in there for an extended period of time. Like damn. Now you know these are stories that are on the internet. You know who knows how true it is, but the, I think the thing that's dangerous is that it's not hard to believe. Marilyn, if you ever see this, you know, I'm not I'm not doing it for that. I'm just saying what I've read, you know, <laughs> haven't seen any other statements on it, but I'm just saying. Yes. 
And there's other people that can go like that for too, but that's when I think that the creativity kind of, for me, it crosses the line for me as a, somebody who identifies as an artist. Like, I wouldn't do that. Was there anything else you wanted to touch bases on? I feel like we didn't hit a nice little stride, a good run. <laughs> it's a good run. Yeah. Um, nothing other than make sure you check out Don Armand on Instagram. Uh, is it at is it at Don Armand? Yeah, at Don Armand. At Don Armand, and you can also check out what we've got going on at the Love Challenger Initiative by going to ltisite.com. Um, you can check out historyisart.com and also the History Is Art Instagram page. So I think, like I said, it's ran its course. So if you're tired and we're tired. That was a bad send off. Let's. It's got to be something else. I was trying to go with run your course. If you're tired, we're tired. <laughs> you can just tell the people we see them later. We'll see you later, people. <laughs>